Hi everyone and welcome along to Sonic Academy's Tech Tips with me, Chris. In this one we're going to take a quick look at VCA faders. VCA faders are from old analog desks where they were a, a master control fader. Uh, you could send several, say, drum faders to this master one fader and you could turn things up or down using this fader. There was no signal went through the fader, it was just a control fader. Uh, so what is the difference between this and gripping and stuff? So if we grip these tracks, we go to grip, grip one. And I want to start adjusting the individual uh, channel strip here. You know, everything moves relative. Once I move one fader or pan pot or uh, sand, it moves them all relative. Uh, I would have to take it out of the group and then, and then deselect and you know, make our adjustments and then go back in and you know highlight come on and then back into the group it just wasn't particularly it wasn't a very elegant solution I never really use groups uh, this is kind of a pseudo group if you have them highlighted you know it still works as a group but as soon as you deselect it, then you move them individually. But, you know, I've used this plenty of times where I've just highlighted a bunch of faders and went, oh, just trim it. VCA faders, we can't see them in our mixer yet, but we're going to show you how to get that. Go to Channel Strip Components, stick in VCA, and you get this new box, new dialog box or menu box. Let's highlight the three faders that we want to adjust, and we want to create a new VCA fader for selected channel strips. Unlike the old analog desk, it puts it to the right hand side of the master section. So this is our output and master section. And now we have VCA fader and we can call this loops. And now you can see that it has no meter like the master fader and the loops. This fader now is just controlling these three faders. It won't graphically change the faders, up or down, but it's changing the relative value of them all. So think of it like kind of stems. So you know sometimes you get it as you would mix your track out in stems. So if you want to go back ever and go, oh, geez, the vocal was just too loud, you can go in, open up the stems, and just trim the the level. You can do that here. One other big advantage of VCA faders is if we go back to uh, our track and we do individual automation here. By turning this right down and this one let's turn it up and you'll see these faders moving this master fader will will trim everything relative to these fades as well so you can have this uh doing a, a fade at the end but still keep the automation within the uh the loop or the track so if you do think about it, this master fader here at the end is a VCA. It's a big massive VCA group of everything sent to it. So you can start building up your mixes where you have all your sort of perk percussion going to or loops going to one fader, all your basses going to another fader, all your vocals, then strings and synths and leads. And you can have several faders here that you can just then balance uh, the relative levels of the the, the stems, so to speak, uh, within the mix. Uh, guys, hope that helps uh, with uh, VCA groups. Just one last thing to say about it is if we create track stacks, a summing stop stack will bust the signal uh, to a bus and you can have effects and pans and stuff on that. A folder stack is essentially creating a VCA fader. This is what VCA fader is. It's kind of a bit an updated concept on folder stack. All right, guys, hope that helped and see you all very, very soon. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.